Hello, welcome to this class on portrait drawing. Today we're going to focus on a group portrait of three little boys. So the first step is going to be the rough sketch. If I use a straight edge, I can see better how the different shapes fall with respect to each other. So let's start by building out the rectangle that all of the three heads would fit inside. Starting with a very large shape like that is going to be very helpful with making sure that the picture fills the page and that the different people fall where I want them to on the page. So if this is the top of the head and this is the bottom of the middle boy's chin, I can fill in from there, make his head shape. Then the second boy's head is going to fall about here. And the right side boy, his head is a little bit higher up and a little bit farther away from the middle boy. Then I can start to place some rough guidelines. The center boy is looking down, so his guideline for the eyes arcs down. This boy is tilting his head and looking straight out, so it's a fairly straight line. And this youngest boy is looking up, so his eye guideline arcs up. Then place the other largest shapes of the portrait, so this middle boy's shoulders and this boy's shoulders, his hands. See how nice and loose and sketchy I keep all of my lines at this point. And you're always working from the largest shapes and then filling in the detail of the smaller shapes within those large forms once the big ones are correct. And then I'll put on some basic hairlines. Okay, now guidelines for the noses. And then start to place the features on the face. I always start with the eyes because all of the features of the face can be measured from the eye. So the eyes are approximately one eye's width apart. Use a piece of scratch paper and measure off that distance. Fill in rough circles for the irises. The bottom of the nose is generally an eye's width down. Here, because he's looking down, it's an eye's width from the bottom of the eye to the top of the nostril, so that's a huge difference. Here's my eye's width. This should be the top of the nostril. Uh, the tips of the nose line up with the inner corner of the eyes. Then make measurements again to place the mouth. Here, it's an eye's width from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the mouth. So just gradually taking little baby steps like this, your portrait begins to take form. Then I need to place the features on the other boys' faces in the same way. So now the next step is to take these shapes and move them onto the high quality drawing paper that you're going to do the final piece on. What I'm going to do is actually transfer the drawing. But I don't want to use transfer paper because it can get really harsh and I don't want my lines to be too dark. So I'm just going to scribble with a 6B graphite pencil over the back of the lines. Then for transferring, use a sharp, hard pencil. Flip that scribbly part over onto your paper and I'm just going to do the essential lines here. I might not even do the entire thing, I just want to block in the large shapes that I already have. Alright, see it's really really faint but it's enough that it's going to save me time because I can just trace over the top now and I don't have any dark lines that are biting into the paper. So at this point I'm going to darken up these lines and make sure that the outlines for the shapes and the features are all nice and clear. Then we'll be ready to move on to the shading portion of the drawing. At this point all I've done is clean up my sketch lines and now I'm ready to move on to shading. 
I'm going to start with an H pencil working from the darkest areas to the lightest. I'm looking for the shapes of the shadows. So here I'm going to shade according to the direction of the growth. Up and down like this using the side of the pencil to begin with. And then for the individual hairs I can go in with the tip of the pencil holding it in the drawing style like this. Remember that lines don't actually exist. You aren't cut out of paper and then pasted together. The appearance of lines are caused by light hitting contours. Tone down the lines of a drawing as much as you can. And the way that you do that is you put down the shading on one side of the line and then you blend out one side so that you still have a distinction between the light and dark and yet you don't have a drawn line anymore. The line has been blended away. After blending you might need to darken up that area a little bit repeat the steps again. But as a general rule you want to start by laying down the tone in the largest shadow shapes on the face. See them as shapes and put them down as such. So I'm going to put all of the shading down over the cheek and on the neck and so on and so forth until I have at least initial shading over the large forms. When you have the initial layer of tone down, use a stomp or tortillon and follow the same contour to make a nice smooth skin tone. Then protect the surface from smudging by placing down a clean piece of paper and then I'm going to fluctuate between the dark 4B and a lighter H or 2H for making those small, small details. See how I build up the portrait in pieces, but I don't finish the eyes completely before I move down to the nose. And that will help you to see how the portrait is balancing as you go along. I'm going to add a little bit more shading to the lips. So once I have this face worked up to about this level, I am going to follow suit on the other two faces as well. So I'm just putting down some tone in the largest shapes first, looking for the shadow shapes that fall over everything. And as you add some of that tone, you should also work on softening up the lines. So I'm going to work this way and get these two faces up to about the same level as this first face and then I'll come back to it to show you how to put on the hair and add additional details to the facial features. Now one initial pass of putting down tone is finished. So I can move on to step two, which is blending. When you're blending, make sure to use the largest tool for the area to ensure the smoothest finish possible. If you're using stomps and tortillons, get a selection of different sizes. They have many different sizes, and that way you can switch from one to the other. When you want to hide your strokes, the pencil strokes, you can use really delicate touch and little circle strokes like this. Go around and around, and that way you don't wind up with a harsh, blended outline that just replaces one line with another line. So you see how I'm just going back and forth, adding more tone with the pencil, blending that tone smooth with the stomp, and then picking out highlights as needed with the kneaded eraser. And then you can go in, blend the tone in the corner of the eyes, and do some more delicate detail work just like this. And remember, don't work it up too far until you've done more work on the other faces and on the rest of the head. So I'm going to shift now and do some more work on the hair. I'm going to use a nice dark and really punch up the shadow of the hair here. And depending on the paper that you're working on, the texture of the paper can either be a hindrance or a help. As it bounces over the top of that texture, I get the broken darks and lights on each individual hair that you would see realistically as well. Remember you don't want to overdraw. 
If you draw every hair, then you're going to make busy amateurish work. You just pluck out a few highlights and then use a stomp and blend smooth. After blending once, make the choice to either go back in and redarken or to move on to a different feature. And keep in mind too that wherever you add contrast you're going to draw the eye's attention. So now I have to do that rendering on each portrait. I'm also going to push up the darks a little bit more on this one and then I'll come back to it again. Now we're moving right along. I've got all of the faces brought up to this same level, so let's just do the same thing and push it up to the next level. It's just really repetitive. I'm going in with an H, and I'm emphasizing a few of the lines of the folds of the clothes and the darkest shadows. And I'm just going to pick and choose a few of those lines to emphasize, not every line. Emphasize every line and your portrait starts to look like a coloring book picture. I'm also going to use a sharp, softer pencil and add some flyaway hairs on the outside of the heads. In this stage you start to pick up the darkest places of the face and put them in with a sharp, soft pencil. I'm using a 4B right now. Commonly those places include the corners of the mouth, the pupils, an outline around the iris, the division between the fingers, and some areas in the hair. So I just switch back and forth, back and forth, adding some darks, blending those lines, and then going in, if necessary, with a harder pencil to make softer line delineations. Where two planes meet, instead of making a line to distinguish them from each other, try to make the delineation clear with shading. Here this boy's head touches this boy's sleeve. So I'm going to make the sleeve side darker and keep a highlight on the edge of the cheek and that will give me a clear distinction from one plane to another without making it look like he's been cut out and placed on top of this other boy. Make sure that you do that wherever you have two planes meeting. So the ear on top of the shirt, the hand on top of the shirt, the sleeve on top of the wrist, and so on and so forth. You have to have either a line or a distinction and contrast or those planes are going to blend into each other and just look flat. Let me work this way for a little while and then we'll come back again. I have the wrinkles drawn in so I just kind of work around the wrinkles, darkening up the folds and picking out the highlights. When you have solid tone down, pick out a highlight and then accent one side of it with a pencil, just like this. You see here how you can use a dirty stomp and do the gradual shading on white fabric without ever even using a pencil. The dirty stomp also works well on areas like shading the fingers, anywhere that you want there to be subtle shading without a lot of contrast. Alright, so let me go ahead and finish this up off camera. I'm just going to be doing the same process. It's really slow but it's the same thing over and over again and I'll come back to show you the finished work. Now here's the portrait after a few hours of detail rendering. Just make sure to fight the tendency to overwork your drawing and to make everything too smeary. You want there to be both clean straight lines and blended lines. The areas of the cleanest contrast and the sharpest lines are going to draw the eye. If I focus in here you can see some of the work in the eyebrows, the eyelashes, the cracks in the lips, and the shadows between the teeth, just to give it a few finishing touches. The next step would be to put the drawing away for a while so that you can come back to it with fresh eyes in a few days or a few weeks and then determine at that point whether or not you're finished. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to say that this is a finished portrait. I'm going to put it away now and we're going to move on to our landscape painting.